I wanted to take an open-minded look at the carnivore diet, but let me tell you, that is not easy to do. This is the carnivore way. Eat meat. This is the health way. Do you think your ancestors got excited about eating pond scum? Heart, liver, skirt steak, lamb, eyeball, squirrels, and also some field rats that we're gonna go ahead and cook for Liver King today. So, what are you gonna do? You know what you're gonna do. You're gonna go carnivore. And not even because of the meat itself, but because most of the people that push this diet and the logic behind the entire thing is really everything wrong with fad diets. The carnivore diet consists of only animal products, meat, eggs, dairy, and no plant products. Which vegetables are okay to eat? My answer is no. You wanna heal all those diseases? You go to this. This will heal all. Uh, is he allowed to say that? If you wanna stay diseased, you know what you're eating. This, grass and grains will fry your brains. That's actually contrary to literally everything I've ever learned about health, so please tell me more. Okay, he went to the store and he's buying kale. Nice and blended, throw it in a cup, bright green glorious goodness. He's throwing the kale in the garbage. This is Dr. Robert Kiltz. Now, despite what the two cameras might have you believe, Dr. Kiltz is not exactly killing it on TikTok, but his SEO is so on point that you cannot research the carnivore diet without coming up on one of his pages. Which means that in the eyes of Google, this guy is technically an authority on this topic. Meaning that if someone is trying to do the carnivore diet, they may end up inadvertently getting advice from this guy. Is it possible, here's an interesting idea, that millions of years ago or hundreds of thousands of years ago, somewhere in between humans came out of Africa. But before we get into human evolution with Dr. Kiltz, a quick message from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. If you use the internet, you should be using a VPN. And today's sponsor, Atlas VPN, is offering the best VPN deal on the market at just $1.83 per month and three months free. I used to be resistant to using a VPN, but then the Canadian government ruined the internet here and now I use one full time. Using Atlas VPN, it's easy to quickly switch my location and get to the international and blocked content I'm really looking for. But no matter where you are, there are a ton of different ways you can use Atlas VPN. Watch more content on Netflix, Hulu, and even here on YouTube. Just switch your location and access new movies, TV shows, and videos not offered in your home country. You might be surprised at what you're not seeing. Keep your browsing and search history private. Using incognito mode isn't enough since your internet service provider can still see all of your requests. Use Atlas VPN with incognito mode to browse and search without being directly tracked by your ISP. Atlas VPN is also more than just a VPN. It also blocks all malicious links, ads, and trackers you might run into while on the web. And the best part is you could use Atlas VPN on all of your devices with a single subscription. Atlas VPN has apps for all major computers, phones, and even some TVs. Atlas VPN is offering what they're calling the best VPN deal on the market. Grab this big deal now because Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month, plus get three months extra on a three-year plan. Protect your privacy and get the many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. Try Atlas VPN risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Be quick as it's a limited time offer. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring today's video. And back to the video. Millions of years ago or hundreds of thousands of years ago, somewhere in between humans came out of Africa. We came out of the trees. Wait, what? <laughs> Did we get down on all fours and eat the grass? Or did we get in a huddle and plan the hunt to kill and eat the grass eaters? Which one? The second one. Okay, I'm gonna keep playing the clip and I'm not gonna stop it. Otherwise, I would be stopping it like every other word. Yeah, just comment your favorite part below. But we've been duped by the masters. Masters who went to Africa first and captured the slaves and forced those hunters to eat wash. When you're fed grass and grains, you want more grass and grains. So now your brain has been completely trashed. So to be a vegan or vegetarian or Mediterranean where you want those things, it's not your fault. You've been drugged. So plants are actually drugs that the masters know how to feed to the masses to keep them meek. But we're hunters. We're ancient hunters. We've been made meek. It's a simple story. I don't know where to start with that. There's so much wrong with it. It literally starts with, we came out of the trees and ends with, plants are drugs. We came out of the trees, so plants are actually drugs. What, what can I even say to that? 
to even question like what timeline of human evolution this guy is talking about, it's just, it's giving it way too much credit. Masters, Africa, slaves, mush, millions of years, thousands of years. I am so confused and I feel like Dr. Klitz might be too. And let me remind you, this isn't just some guy. This guy was heading a carnivore conference like a few days ago. You can already see that there may be some major cracks in the foundation of the carnivore diet. As we'll see, the logic of it, at least on TikTok, is very unsound. No. Thing is, I'm not anti-meat by any means. I personally think that humans are omnivores. I think that the evidence is very strong that we are omnivores. But I still think that a range of diets can be healthy and that the data supports that a range of diets can be healthy. So like I said, I'm coming into this, I'm not even really biased against it. I was really trying to take an open-minded look at the carnivore diet. But as we'll see, it is simply too flawed to take seriously. And a lot of that is due to the various personalities that promote it like Dr. Kiltz and many, many more. We know that this is what we've all been eating. Fruit, fiber, vegetables, seeds, and nuts. We have? Would it kill this guy to do a Google search before he speaks? Last time I checked, the issue was getting people to eat more of those things because most people were not eating enough of them. And we're all getting diseased. ADHD, OCD, dementia, dyslexia, depression, anxiety, fear, worry. And more. So I'm guessing he's saying these two things are connected. What's the cause of disease? As I said, it's likely the consumption of plants. Oh, um, okay. Based on what exactly? Like what? What? Look at this caption. You want to be healthy? Eat fatty meat and then eat some more. No fruit, fiber, veggies, nuts, or seeds necessary. In fact, I'd argue any of those things in any frequency or significance is the leading cause of disease. Any frequency? leading cause of disease? Those are some very, very bold claims, sir. Claims that I assume you have the evidence to back up? You know where this garbage belongs. So I guess that's a, a no? So plants are actually drugs. What? <laughs> Why are there so many people that don't understand what it is to make an argument these days? This guy is a literal doctor. You can't just say stuff like that with zero evidence to back it up. I feel like in ancient Greece, civilians probably just conversed in proper argument format. And in the modern world, this guy is trying to convince me that vegetables are going to kill me because he said so. It's kind of crazy to think that eating plants are bad for us. They kill you from the inside out. Stop eating plants. Start eating meat. You gotta give me something to work off here, man. I'm trying to hear you out, but I also strive to be a rational person. And that's the thing. It's crazy that this diet is getting this level of attention when this is the quality of the thinking that's gone into it. Now, one thing, as I mentioned, this guy is a real doctor. So obviously that accounts for a lot. Though doctors have led me astray before. Everything magic is make-believe, but this little bean has scientists saying they found a magic weight loss cure for every body type. Do you believe there's a magic weight loss cure out there? It, it, the, the word... Ma it, it. We have a doctor that's telling the nation today that actually you don't need to lose weight and you can be healthy. Oh my God, enough with the fat around the organs. That is not a real thing. It is made up. What's the standard American diet? I'll tell you. It's what we've all been eating globally. Oh, so everyone around the world eats the standard American diet. Okay. On a standard American doc, standard American diet recommended by a standard American doctor. I know there's a little foo there. This comment. This guy seems a little confused. It's plant-based, very little animal products. It's mostly fish and chicken and lean, and there's no fatty red meat. Sir, that is very famously not the standard American diet. The standard American diet looks more like this. What you're describing is actually more similar to the Mediterranean diet, which has plenty of evidence linking it to good health. Go to an all meat nutritional solution to be the healthy lioness and lion. Sir, what if I'm not a lion and I'm I'm instead a homo sapien? Should I still, I should still only eat meat? I have so many questions. Where did this diet even come from? Why is everyone eating testicles? And what's with all the butter? It's hard to tell where the carnivore diet came from. Some say it's from Jordan Peterson's daughter, Michaela Peterson. My mom went on the diet and her osteoarthritis went away. My dad went on the diet and he lost 70 pounds. He had psoriasis, that went away. I've talked to thousands of people with autoimmune disorders who've done similar things and seen similar results. Pretty nuts. From what I understand, Michaela only eats beef and salt. And she's among the growing population of people with autoimmune disorders who are finding relief by going on an all meat diet. And I think that's all very interesting 
interesting, very valid, and definitely warrants further research. But let's think about the average person. There are a lot of people hopping on the carnivore diet train. And I think most people aren't doing it for this highly specialized reason. They're doing it for a weight loss thing, a health thing, maybe a fun identity thing. And are the benefits that these people are experiencing really coming from the meat itself? Or are they simply coming from eliminating everything else? A major claim of the carnivore diet is that a meat-based diet is our primal, natural, ancestral way of eating. And that's where all these purported health benefits are supposed to come from. And the thing is, carnivores are kind of right about this. Experts agree that early humans definitely ate meat. Some experts think we ate a lot of meat, other experts think it was more mixed, while virtually no experts think that we were pure vegetarians. No thank you. Why do you no eat mammoths? Oh, uh, me doing this thing, uh, this little pleisto diet thing right now. What that? It's stupid fad diet. No! So yeah, early humans ate meat. No argument from me there. But experts also seem to agree that early humans were omnivores. Why does that fact seem to be being conveniently ignored? This is what I ate today on my raw meat lifestyle. As I'm doing my morning routine, I'm reminded of the tragic fact that many people start their mornings with a big hot cup of toxic bean juice. Now this girl isn't considered to be a carnivore authority, but she's pretty fun, so I had to include her. What if we all replaced our espresso shots with a shot of raw liver? So coffee is toxic bean juice, but she chases raw liver with Jarrito soda and cooks the liver in syrup. I feel like most of the carnivores are trolling, but it's scary that you can't be sure. That's not even the worst of it either. This carnivore's logic also includes gazing directly into the sun. An introduction to sun gazing. Find a comfortable spot with an unobstructed view of the sun. Feel the sun on your closed eyelids and slowly open. Man, please don't do that. Don't do prehistoric humans like that either. They were smart enough to know not to do that. But that's what I'm saying. There's no rules here. There's no logic to the whole thing. Like, what is with all the vegetable hate? Cabbage is bullshit. Broccoli is bullshit. Kale is bullshit. Wow, a person standing at the grocery store wearing a t-shirt with their dietary beliefs on it while simultaneously doing this with their eyes. That is the type of person I'm going absolutely nowhere near. Also, does this guy not already feel so much so like the type of person who would be irritated at vegans for being zealous or overly enthusiastic about their beliefs while simultaneously being guilty of the exact same thing. Oh, and here's a video of him accosting a vegan guy at the grocery store. Where are you gonna get choline from? Where are you gonna get creatine from? Where are you gonna get carnitine? No, there's no creatine in plants. Where are you gonna get carnitine from? Where are you gonna get, where are you gonna get, uh, where are you gonna get answering and taurine? Where are you gonna get vitamin K2? You ever heard of vitamin K2? I'm telling you, all our food is in plants. No. <laughs> all our herbs, all our herbs you can't stand in the vegetable section with an antagonistic t-shirt on, eyes bugged right out of your skull, picking fights with people trying to buy vegetables. That is so out of line. Imagine a vegan standing in the meat section yelling meat is murder and harassing you while you're just trying to buy your weenies. No matter what side you're on, it's equally not cool. Also, is he not wearing shoes? <laughs> comment. Yes, I always take advice from people walking around barefoot. This guy, Paul Saladino, calls himself Carnivore MD and seems to be one of the main, if not the main, authority on the topic of carnivore diets. I know he's been around for a while, but this was my first introduction to him, and I just wonder, what about this starter pack made him think that this was a reasonable, authoritative move? This is not good for humans, despite what you've been told. Get it out of your diet, you'll feel better. Kale is bullshit. Get your kale is bullshit shirt and make everybody in the grocery store curious and look at you just like they're looking at me as I'm waving kale around here. You know what's up. Paul has also been prone to wearing no shirt at the grocery store. Like, dude, you're disturbing the peace. Modern society might be wrong about some things, but no shirt, no shoes, no service is not one of them. People have the right to buy their groceries without your juices all over them. The thing is though, we've been so horribly wrong about basically everything when it comes to nutrition that I'm so open to the argument that maybe it is biologically appropriate for humans to eat more fatty red meat. Grass-fed meat is certainly very nutrient dense. It's a whole food. So to me, it's automatically better than 90% of what you can buy at the grocery store. And the carnivore guys are big on eating the organs too very big on it, which is a practice that almost every ancient community seems to have engaged in that we've since lost. But why do the carnivores have to take that idea to the extreme? Where is the vegetable hate coming from? No. 
I guess to the people in the carnivore world, or at least this guy and some others, vegetables contain dangerous compounds. And the benefit of a carnivore diet is that you eliminate all of these anti-nutrients found in plants. <gasps> but Ben, I thought plants were good for you. Not the case most of the time. They kill you from the inside out. They contain the chemicals, the lectins, the oxalates, the phytates, and last I looked, all vegetables, fruit, fiber, seeds, and nuts are mostly sugar, which causes glycation and damages your body. Stop eating plants. No. How do you know, bros? How do you know? That's a nice story. Sounds plausible enough. Where's the evidence? Thing is, vegetables have a lot of solid data linking them to good health. That's an undeniable fact. Tons of studies linking them to good health, which is another major issue with carnivore thinking. For some reason, these guys have decided that every bit of evidence that contradicts their beliefs just doesn't count. Of course, all the evidence linking red meat to ill health also doesn't count. And like I said, nutrition science is messed up in so many ways and there are so many nuances that it really is hard to say one thing one way or another. These red meat studies could be very wrong, but they could also be very right and these studies exist. You can't just write off and ignore all evidence contrary to your belief and then cite one-off cherry-picked sources to support your hypothesis. Like what are the rules of this carnivore world? Case in point, Paul Saladino's current rendition of the carnivore diet. Eat beef and fruit. This is the simplest version of an animal-based diet. Anyone can do this. So his version of carnivore is not just meat-based. It also includes fruit and honey, which sounds like a very healthy addition. But let's listen to his explanation for why. Fruit, sweet, colorful, clearly plants want to sweet their fruit. Fruit contains the least amount of defense chemicals. In stark contrast to things like vegetables, into which plants put many more defense chemicals because they don't want you to eat those things. Plants do want you to eat fruit. I mean, hey, sounds plausible, right? Except this narrative is a somewhat recent development for him. Previously, he was 100% meat-based until that wasn't working out so well for his health. After two years of a ketogenic carnivore diet of just meat, organs, fat, and salt, I quit. I quit that ketogenic diet and I added fruit and honey to my diet. So Paul added in fruit and honey because his previous diet was messing with his health. So here he's going through his old lab work when he was like pure carnivore. But my free testosterone was 4.64, which is a little on the low side. 4.64, a little on the low side? You're literally a 80 year old hypogonadal man right now. Like that's what your free test is. And now he has a whole story about how and why his current diet is the optimal diet for humans. Plants do want you to eat fruit. But in reality, what happened? He changed his diet out of necessity for his health. Then when it worked, he made up a story and looked for data to confirm his prior belief. And Paul's book, The Carnivore Code, if it hasn't been amended since it's been published, still lists sweet fruits as second tier toxic. So you can see when he was a full carnivore, sweet fruit was toxic. And now that he's been proven wrong, sweet fruit is specifically very nutritious. So you can see why there are major flaws to being particularly zealous about any sort of diet in the first place. Ultimately, you're looking for evidence to confirm your prior belief, to confirm whatever narrative you think is true about food. Most scientists agree on one point about our ancestral diet. It was varied. Tribe to tribe, place to place, we ate different foods and we were highly adaptable omnivores, which is potentially why we survived for so long. So if the ancestral story has no legs, then what is the point of the whole thing? Other than to sell books because the paleo diet was already taken. No. And that's really my problem with the carnivore diet. When you start making all these hard rules, you really start losing touch with truth and reality. In reality, there's no real logic to the whole thing. Carnivores make it seem like they're doing this because it was our ancestral diet, but really they all just kind of do whatever they want and have their own little narrative to go along with their choices. Nacho testies. This guy's eating raw testicles and beef penis, but also Tostitos cheese on it. I mean, I know he's trolling, but like, what are the rules? I can't keep up. Like, I think another thing is too, what is with all the butter? Add butter, 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 add butter. Okay, but if you're eating carnivore to return to the hunter-gatherer days, then what is with all the butter and the cheese? I'm pro-butter in general. For years, everyone switched from cooking with butter and animal fats to eating margarine, which was marketed as the healthy, lower-calorie alternative to butter, but which we later discovered was loaded with deadly trans fats and kind of just an overall scam. But what timeline of history are we talking about? Are we carnivorous hunter-gatherers, or are we making butter at home after the dawn of agriculture? There's so many plot holes and inconsistencies 
frequencies, the only version of carnivore that makes sense is the one where you're forced to eat just beef and salt because your body can't handle anything else. Everything else is just riddled with issues. Look at this carnivore Costco haul. Eggs, salmon, rotisserie chicken with some additives that she points out, ground beef, cheese, shredded cheese, egg bites, and cream cheese. You know, somehow I don't think that our ancestors were spreading Philadelphia cream cheese on their woolly mammoth legs. Also these egg bites here, the ingredients. They include locust bean gum, agar, and cultured celery powder. Not only is celery powder seemingly in the vegetable category and therefore not allowed, it's also the food industry's latest favorite trick. Cultured celery powder is really nitrate by another name. I believe it's a celery concentrate, but it performs the same function as a nitrate. The food industry likes to do this thing where when people become concerned about an ingredient, ingredient, such as nitrates, instead of removing it, they find a way to put it in, but under a more friendly sounding name. If all the benefits of the carnivore diet come from returning to this mythical carnivorous ancestral way of eating, then you're doing it wrong by eating nitrates, locust bean gum, and any other food that's not the whole animal, right? I hate to break it to you, but if your carnivore meal looks like this, make a carnivore friendly cake with me. I took half a cup of cream cheese and then I did some warmed up mascarpone and then I made some whipped cream. The milk and cheese inclusion, that is just for fun and that's okay, but then why do the carnivore diet at all unless you have some sort of physical issue that makes it the best option for you? Why not just eat a varied whole food based diet? You could still even base it around meat. Meat could still be the star of the show if you believe that meat nutrients are somehow superior to plant nutrients. But all the arbitrary rules are just unnecessary even just from a logic perspective. And I'm seriously convinced that all these rules just exist because the paleo diet was already taken and carnivore sounds way cooler. Which brings me finally to the testicles. This is a favorite among carnivores. You can't do a video on carnivores without talking about the testicle consumption. Why? Just why? Raw as well? Why does that have to be part of it? I could not find a single study on the validity of this. Personally, I like testicle okay. and I've been eating raw testicle for like the last year. There's interesting things in it and it could just be all placebo, man, but I feel like there's a libido boost when you eat it. Maybe there's boron in the testicle. It could be a lot of different things. So I like testicle. That is one beefy leap of faith. You would think that people would wait until there was like a stack of evidence before jumping balls deep into a literal fear factor meal. I'm not gonna go too much more into the testicles. I'm sure that there's a carnivore narrative narrative about why they're the most important food in the world to eat. But I think that this post from Lane Norton really sums up what the main problem with the carnivore diet is. Nutrition is the new religion. When I was on the Joe Rogan podcast, I made a point to say that I don't hate any particular diet. I just hate bullshit. I don't hate keto. I hate that keto zealots try to twist the scientific data to fit the narrative that insulin is why you can't lose fat. I don't hate vegan diets. I hate that vegan zealots have to fear monger and drastically exaggerate the dangers of meat. I don't hate the carnivore diet. I hate that people promote it as a cure for various diseases with zero evidence for it. I don't hate intermittent fasting. I hate that people promote it as superior for fat loss and as some kind of longevity miracle. I don't hate any diet. I hate misrepresenting scientific data to push an agenda. All of these groups are guilty of this. Why? It's their identity. They had success with a particular approach and became enthusiastic about it. They sought out other people who were enthusiastic about it. They marinated their minds in an echo chamber of reinforcing their biases and cognitive dissonance. Over time, they start to identify as that diet group. This is why you see so many people with keto or carnivore or vegan as the first thing in their bio. Literally the first thing they use to describe themselves is how they eat. Now you've reached a level of zealotry where you cannot listen to reason. You can't even consider any contrarian evidence because it violates your entire identity. Don't fall into this nonsense of making nutrition your religion and identity. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching check out this video and I'll see you in the next one. Give it a show. Get with the game. The game of bones. But they're not turkey bones, chicken bones, or fish bones. They're beef bones. The game of bones. Enjoy.